Welcome to this second video on the definite integral and in this video we're going to be using a geometric approach where we're going to use geometry to evaluate a definite integral. So we saw in the last video that um, the notation for the definite integral looks very similar to the indefinite integral except for we have these added limits on our integral sign. So we have a lower limit and an upper limit. This is the lower one here. This is the upper limit. And then we have our derivative function dx. So now in the examples that we're be that you'll be given, you won't necessarily know that the function in here is the derivative. You'll just be given a function. It won't say f prime of x. And so this the value of this is the cho change in total value and it equals the area between that x-axis and the rate graph. And when that area sometimes is above the x-axis and sometimes it's below the x-axis, you can think of taking the area above the x-axis minus the area below. Now remember in the stock price example that we were working on in the first video, that we weren't used to necessarily having a negative area, but in the example that we were working with, that negative area just meant that our stock price was decreasing. So we had a negative change in value instead of a positive change in value. So let's look at this first example. So we are supposed to evaluate the definite integral from 1 to 7 of x minus 2 dx. And the only way that we know so far to evaluate these things is be, by using geometry. So we have to figure out what the area looks like for this particular definite integral. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph f of x equals x minus 2. If you need your grapher you can use it but this is just a straight line with a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of negative 2 so it looks like this. Our lower limit is 1 and our upper limit is 7 so we're looking from here up to here. Now notice that over here our area lies below the x-axis so that means our our function, original function, is actually going um, down in value. And over here, our function has is above that x-axis, so our function is increasing in value. Okay, so now, in order to evaluate this definite integral, we have this part that lies below this x-axis x -axis, and the part that lies above the x-axis. So we are going to evaluate the integral um, by thinking about those two areas. So we're going to take the area above the x-axis and subtract off the area below. Or you could think of um, the area below being negative and you're adding it but this gets subtracted. Okay, so the area above, our shape is a triangle, so we're going to have one half. Our base here is, let's see, this is 2, 4, 5, times our height. Our height is 2, 4, 5. And this, this part needs to be counted as negative because it, it um, lies below the x-axis, and so I have this negative sign here. Again, we're looking at a triangle, so we're going to have one half. Our base this time is one, because it's only one unit this way, and our height is also one. So again, you can think of this height here, the you can think of it as negative one, and then this is a plus, or you could think of it as positive one, and then it's a minus, but this part has to count as negative. So we're going to have 25 halves minus 1 half, which is 24 halves, which is 12. So the value of our definite integral here is 12. Let's look at one last example. So here we have an example that's pretty similar to the stock price example that we did in the first video. We are supposed to evaluate the integral from 0 to 5 of f prime of t dt and 
this here is the graph of f prime. So remember, the value of this definite integral is going to be equal to the total change in value of our function, and it's also equal to the area between our rate graph and our x-axis. So if we look at 0 to 5, here's 5, here's 0, this kind of gets split up into these two regions. So we're going to do this one in a couple of different ways. So we have this area here which is going to count as positive because it's above the x-axis and we have this area over here which is going to count as negative because it lies below the x-axis. So our integral from 0 to 5 of f prime of t dt is going to equal, so let's calculate this part here first. We're going to have, let's see, I'll go ahead and use purple for that, one half, our base is 2 and our height is 2 squares which is a uh, height of 1. Okay, and then we can either think of adding on the, this negative area down here or subtracting off the negative area. Let's go ahead and add it because we have we're gonna have to break this up into two. So notice here this this shape here I, I can't calculate it just in one shot so I'm going to first calculate this area of this triangle and then we'll calculate the area of this trapezoid here. So the area of the triangle is one half, our base is two, and our height is negative one. So again this counts as below the x-axis so this has to be a negative area here. Since I used a plus I, I'm going to use a negative height. And then here plus, let's do the area of the trapezoid, we're going to have one half, our base this time is one, and since it's a trapezoid we have to take the sum of those two heights. So the height on the left is negative 0.5 and the height on the right is negative one. So overall we're going to have one half times two, so that's just one, plus one half times two, this gives us one, and then we have um, a negative one, so we're going to have negative one, plus, let's see, this gives us negative 1.5, so we're going to have one half times negative 1.5, so that's negative 0.75, so this ends up being negative 0.75. So if you think back to that stock price problem, this would mean that over those first five hours our stock price actually decreased in value. So that's why we would have the negative area. Okay, so let's look at it this a different way. So I'm going to calculate this same area using a slightly different tactic. I'm still going to think about, okay, I'm going from 0 to 5, and so I have from 0 to 5, but one thing I'm noticing here is that this shape here and this shape here, those two kind of cancel each other out because they're the same exact shape, but they, um, this one counts as positive and this one counts as negative, so these two will cancel each other out, so I don't even need to cancel or calculate them, and that saves me a little bit of work. So all I need to ca calculate is this area here. So the value of my definite integral is going to equal, we could just go with the trapezoidal shape again, we're going to have one half, our base is one, and the sum of our two heights is negative 0.5 plus negative one, so we end up with negative 0.75. Now, another thing to notice here is that when the area between the rate graph and the x-axis lies more below the x-axis than it does above, you're going to have a negative definite integral. When the area is more concentrated above the x-axis than it is below, then you're going to have a positive area. And if it's even, like maybe we weren't even counting from the 0 to 1 part. Maybe we were just going from 1 to 5. If that were the case, then our value 
of our definite integral would be zero because see how these two shapes cancel each other out and so then we had no change in our um, original function. So that's it for this video. There is one more video from this section on calculating definite integrals where um, we learn what to do if we don't have a shape or a curve that can be broken up into nice rectangles, triangles, and trapezoids.